everyone, so we have kind of a new filming setup today because last weekend I changed my bedroom around and I kind of forgot that that meant it would mess up my filming setup. As you can see from the title, I have yet another book haul. I think it's only been about um, three weeks maybe, if that, since I uploaded a book haul. I know I have a problem but I just don't feel guilty, I don't, <laughs> I love buying books and I have already read 12, no 11 books this month and it's only the 9th of August so I don't feel guilty at all. So I'll just give you a random little fact first, um, every book in this haul except one is hardback and that's because I've set myself a new book buying rule that I'm only allowed to buy a book if it's in hardback, there are two exceptions to this. Um, if I already own a series in paperback and a new one comes out then I'm obviously going to buy it in paperback so that it will match or if I um, much prefer the paper paperback edition to the hardback edition but that rarely happens. With that being said I have one paperback in this haul and that is P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. I own the first one in paperback so obviously that's why this one found its way into my basket. Um, I picked this up when I was away with my boyfriend last weekend. Basically this book haul came about because I started my new job and I had my first ever payday and the weekend I got my first ever payday um, we went away for the weekend so I went a little bit crazy and bought lots of books. This was one of them. Then I have this gorgeous edition of The Borrowers by Mary Norton. I saw The Borrowers film when I was younger but I never read the book and this is adorable. It's such a nice edition. Then we have Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I read this the day after I bought it. Again, it was one I picked up while I was away for the weekend. It's just this really adorable little hardback edition and this is such a cute story. It ma it actually made me cry like while I was in the car on the way home from Ikea. Um, so if you haven't read this, I'd really recommend it. Next I got this beautiful edition of The Hobbit, it's one of the um, hardback cloth bound editions and it has this map in the front. Um, I actually own a copy of The Hobbit, I have the pocket edition and it's really lovely but every time I've tried to start reading it I just cannot read that pocket edition, it's too small so I finally picked up a full size edition and I believe that you can get the Lord of the Rings trilogy in these editions too but they're quite hard to get hold of so I'm going to keep an eye out. And finally when we went away for the weekend we went to Chichester on Saturday, that wasn't where we were staying but um, Chichester isn't far away and there's a bookshop there called Kim's Bookshop which I've been to a few times, it's a little independent shop and they take in secondhand books but they also have new editions of books too and I went there with the sole purpose of picking up this edition of Alice in Wonderland because they'd had it the last time I was there and I really wanted them to still have it and they did. Um, it's the Barnes & Noble leather bound edition. Next we have The Art of Being Normal by Lisa Williamson. I picked this up off Amazon because it was like £7. Apparently it is about a boy who um, feels as though he is a girl. So it's a transgender story. Um, I think it is, yeah, David wants to be a girl. That is what it's about. I'm super, super excited to read it and see how they deal with that sort of issue and also beautiful end papers. Then also on payday I finally picked up Very Good Lives by JK Rowling. I have wanted to read this for so long since it came out but now that I am a graduate, although I haven't had my graduation ceremony yet, it's not till October, but now that I'm a graduate I wanted to read it even more because this is JK Rowling's Harvard commencement speech that she gave, I can't remember what year. I've already read it, it was great, it was so inspiring and funny and just typical JK Rowling. For our anniversary my boyfriend gave me Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. I've already read this one as well, really enjoyed it. It's about two sisters who are estranged from each other after an accident which one of them kind of caused and it's about their relationship and there is a big twist and it I thought it was really good. It doesn't have very high ratings on Goodreads, but I loved it. Then we have this beautiful edition of Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I love Peter Pan. It's one of my favorite children's classics. It's one of my favorite films. I just love it. And I saw this book in a few people's videos and I looked on Amazon and it was only 12 99 and I was like, got to have it, got to have it. It's hardback, it's cloth bound, there's gold foiling and it's completely interactive. So there's like all these things in it that you can do. Then I picked up a cloth bound edition of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee because um, I recently read Ghost at a Watchman by Harper Lee and I have that in hardback so of course I then had to have a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird in hardback because I've only got it in a mass market paperback. <laughs> 
and I'm fussy like that and I wanted them next to each other on the shelf but there was no way I was putting my hardback next to a mass market paperback so I picked this up. Then we have Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig. I'm actually reading this at the moment, I'm 65 pages into it. It's about anxiety and depression and it's a non-fiction book so it's written from the author's perspective about his experiences with anxiety and depression. And I really think everyone should read this, it's really important to educate yourself about things like this because one in three people will suffer from mental illness in their life and you need to read this. So I've mentioned it quite a lot recently because it's a massive change in my life but I have my first ever full time job, I've been there over a month now, really enjoying it, blah blah blah, but I work indirectly with books. And once a month they have a massive book sale where all these books get shipped in from all of our like um, imprints I guess and we get to buy them for really cheap prices so I have some really exciting books. The first one is this 10th anniversary edition of Coraline. This is the slip case. I know you can't really see it very well from here but the book is hardback if I can get it out. So the book is hardback and then it's signed by Neil Gaiman and by Chris Riddell, which is just amazing. And do you want to know how much I paid for this? Two pounds. Also from the book sale, I got Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I've heard really good things about this recently, um, and I had kind of like been meaning to put it on my wish list, but I wasn't massively fussed. And then when I saw it at the book sale for a pound, I was like, yes, please. And look at those end papers. Then I have one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen and I also picked this up at my work book sale for a pound and it's Boy Snowbird by Helen Oyeyemi? Sorry, totally butchered her surname. This is cloth bound and there's gold foiling and it's wider than a normal hardback and it's just beautiful. When I saw it I almost squealed out loud because one, I've been wanting to read this book anyway, two, it was a pound, and three, it was beautiful. And they're all in mint condition as well, these books. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just surplus from the publishers, and it's a privilege of working for the company I work for that we get access to these books. So, beautiful, beautiful. Next, we have that other edition of Alice in Wonderland I was talking about. I found this in TK Maxx yesterday, actually, for 5 99 which is insane. It's actually a collection of all of Lewis Carroll's most well-known works. So um, there's Alice in Wonderland, Through the Looking Glass, Sylvia and Bruno, there's some of his poetry. Next, we have another stunning book, and that is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Booktube has been going crazy about this book at the moment and when I saw it I put it straight onto my birthday wish list but every time I looked at my wish list I just had an urge to buy it so when I got paid I just went ahead and bought it. Um, it's absolutely stunning. Underneath the dust jacket it's mint green which is beautiful. Again this is another one that I've got on display. Next, and this was actually the first book I bought after my last book haul. Um, I have the collector's hardback edition of Fangirl. There are a few collector's editions of Fangirl now. There's a like a bright pink one, a yellow one, um, there's the normal green one, and then there's this one. And I just preferred this one. I really like the pale pink. There's some beautiful artwork underneath the dust jacket, and then it has a coffee cup with cap on it. And there's more um, fan art at the back too, which is just so cute. Fangirl was one of my most favourite books when I read it. I thought it was absolutely amazing. I was really moved by it. And I only have it in paperback. And I always kind of worry when I have a really beloved book only in paperback. So this was reduced to £9 on the book depository for a short time. So I snapped it up totally worth it. Next we have Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. This was £6.50 on Amazon so I grabbed it because a hardback for £6.50 is pretty good. I've already read this and I rated it three stars I think. I'll talk about it more if I do a wrap up this month. I'm not sure if I will or not but um, this is about a girl who has quite severe social anxiety and um, it's developed like into agoraphobia. She doesn't really go out. Um, not 100% happy with the way anxiety was portrayed in this because it kind of presented it as being able to have like a quick fix, which was obviously not what Sophie Kinsella was trying to do, but she still did it. So for someone with anxiety, it's kind of like, 
it's not the sort of book that you want people to read and think that this is what anxiety is because I don't think she got it quite right but I did still enjoy it and parts of it were hilarious because the family dynamic in it is just brilliant um, a lot of it is exactly like a real family and I love that in a book so um, yeah I enjoyed it for that next we have another book that everyone is going on about and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir there were rumours that this was going to be a standalone and it was very exciting for everyone because it's not often that you get a fantasy standalone and now they're saying in fact it is going to be a series which is kind of disappointing but this book is beautiful and it was 6 50 on Amazon again um, so I bought it because that's what I do Sorry if I've changed or if the lighting's changed, my camera died so I just had to go and sort it out but I don't buy um, books by YouTubers very often, it's just not something I'm interested in, I feel like it's kind of a bandwagon that they're all jumping on at the moment even though if I had the opportunity to publish a book I obviously would so I'm not like saying it's a bad thing but I feel like a lot of them aren't really releasing anything that I would be interested in reading. But I did buy All I Know Now by Carrie Hope Fletcher which is a non-fiction book and it's thoughts and wonderings of growing up gracefully um, and I think this is aimed at girls a little bit younger than me but it just sounded really cute and I kind of want to know what she has to say I've seen a few of her videos but I'm not subscribed to her channel so I don't um, know her really well or really know what she's about um, but I've heard good things and it was only £7 so I picked it up so yeah those are the books I've bought in the last three weeks it's a lot. I had to buy a new bookshelf and I still don't have anywhere to put all of these newest books. But that's fine. They look lovely anyway. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any thoughts on any of the books, do let me know and I will see you soon. Bye!